Hey folks, Doc here. Today we're going to step away from the usual mower stuff and perform an auto repair. I've got an 03 Chevy Trailblazer with a bad wheel bearing on the front passenger side and we're going to change that out today. I'm going to show you how to do it. Stay tuned. My truck's about 150 feet from the shop and I sure as heck don't have 150 feet air hose so I'm doing this stuff the hard way. Shouldn't be too bad. Uh, first and foremost, you know, I'm not going to go into too much detail about getting your wheel off. If you can't get your wheel off, you've got no business working on cars. In fact, you really have no business possessing a man cart if you can't get a wheel off. But I'm going to point this out. Um, this 35 millimeter axle nut has to come off and it's torqued on there pretty tight. So if you're not using air tools, leave the vehicle down and crack that before you get any further. You know, you need the weight of the vehicle and the resistance to keep things from just, you know, spinning freely while you're trying to crack that sucker. So that's what I've done, is while this thing's sitting on the ground, I've cracked all six lug nuts and I've cracked that 35 millimeter axle nut using a 35 millimeter impact socket on a breaker bar. Having said that, it's time to jack it up and start taking things apart. Okay, wheels off the ground. I shouldn't need to tell you this, but I'm going to tell you anyways. Get a jack stand under there. Good to go. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and whip these lug nuts off. Okay, lug nuts off. Wheel off. Now it's time to get that axle nut out of the way. Like I said, I already cracked it loose while the vehicle was still on the ground. In the case of the Zoe 3 Trailblazer, it's a 35 millimeter. The axle nut is mostly off, but it flushed with the end of the shaft. Now what we got to do is free the axle up out of the hub. The axle's splined into the hub here. I know you can't see much right now, but all will become clear. And I just got to give this thing a couple of wraps. Never mind, one did it. Good stuff. Next, the brake caliper's got The brake caliper is held on by two 17 millimeter bolts, one there. I'll try and get you underneath here. Shooting under a car is always entertaining. And there's the other one right there. So we're gonna get rid of those two and swing the caliper out of the way. That's two. Now we're gonna pry the caliper out. And once we've done that, we're gonna hang it up out of the way, probably using some zip ties or something. Right, so I'm just using a large screwdriver to pry the caliper out of the bracket. Sometimes this is easier if you can sneak in there with something and retract the pads first, but this shouldn't be an issue. I think I'm going to lose the inboard pad doing this, but no biggie. Put it back after. Okay, so I've pried the caliper loose and snuck a zip tie in there. Good mechanical practice teaches us never to hang a caliper by the hose. So I'm just going to find a way to zip tie this up to something. Perhaps this coil spring here. Just get it to kind of support its own weight. And maybe that's a bad place. Hell, I could probably stick it on top for all that matters. There's a hose clamp behind here that makes it so you can't go far with it. So, I think I'm going to sneak the zip tie around to the other side. Go right through the dang thing. Hang it off the upper arm. All right, that'll keep it from falling to its untimely death. Next to go are the caliper bracket bolts. Try and sneak in here. There's a lot of ambient light getting through, and I apologize if you're having a hard time seeing, but there's a bolt here where you can see my finger, and there's a bolt down here. Those have to go next. So I'm gonna get on and crack those next. Okay, so I ended up turning the steering wheel to the right just to give me better access to these caliper bolts. Notice that the brake pads are still sitting in here. Oh, hell with it, they can stay there for now. It doesn't matter, not gonna hurt anything. Put them back in later. Just gonna draw these bolts out, looking at the pads. 
I'm getting due for a brake job fairly soon. All right, bolts are out. Just gonna pull the caliper bracket off. There it is, and set it aside. At this point, the rotor needs to come off and it might need some abuse and it might just pull off. It should just pull off. But uh, you never know. In this particular case, it was loose enough I could just pull it off. All right, there's the rotor. Okay, so we're just about to the unit bearing. Uh, there's three bolts in behind holding it in place, and I'll show you those in a minute. And there's an electrical connector that's got to be Now undone. I can see I'm going to have a demonic time trying to get myself and the camera in there at the same time. So first I'll show you. That's the electrical connector that's got to be undone. And if you follow my finger up the harness, there's a clip here that just clips it to the A-arm. And there's a clip behind the caliper here on the steering knuckle. Those clips have to be undone to get the wire out of the way. So I'm going to move the camera aside and go ahead and do that. Okay, so we've pulled the wire down. It's just hanging freely. The clips are undone. And now I've got to get at those three bolts, which I'll show you Actually, now. they're going to be a pain in the rear end to get at. But looking behind the knuckle here, barring the sunlight, if you can see right here, there's one there. And there's one up top. And there's one on the back side. You'll take my word for it, but it's there. Um, I've got the steering steered to the right right now for easier bolt access. And when I go to get that last one, I'll steer it to the left to bring that bolt out. I'm going to crack those now. Okay, so I'm using an 18 millimeter socket and a short extension. I didn't actually have to turn the knuckle to get at the back one. If it was much tighter, I would have had difficulty, but in this case, it wasn't that bad. As you can see by the whole assembly moving, bolt number three is on his way out. And it looks to me <laughs> that there is a guide. Sometimes you got to pound the ever-loving hell out of these knuckles to get them out. And this one here is just leaving on its own. I sure don't mind that fact. Makes the job much easier when you don't have to beat the pee out of something. Should be able to get that by hand now. All right, that was fantastic. But it looks like the axle is still holding itself there. I know it moved earlier, but there it is now. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a little tap. Okay, that's free, something's still snagging. Okay, so as I go to pull this thing out, it's catching, and I see that the electrical wire is actually caught behind the brake hose here. I'm just gonna release that. All right, drawing the whole thing backwards, including the wire, and there you have okay, it. Okay, so here's the old unit bearing, and this dust shield, which is probably seriously rust welded to the damn thing right now, has to come off. So I'm just gonna, oh, do that. Shields off. There's the old unit bearing. Bye bye. Okay, so here we've got the box for the new unit bearing. All shiny and everything. There we go. Wheel studs are already attached. And uh, how do you like that? New plastic clips. So I guess I can replace the ones I opened. I didn't know that, or I wouldn't have been so gentle on them. There they go. Now, before we install this, I'm just going to set that aside. We're going to take a minute and uh, just basically clean all the loose rust and crap out of here. I've got a little wire brush here. Support the axle. And just in an effort to get this thing to seat perhaps a little bit better gonna clean some of the crap out. Just gonna thread this onto the axle shaft, giving things a turn as needed. There we go. 
Yeah, to get the bolts started, because I've got the steering turned, I've got resistance from the axle shaft that's going to make my life a little bit harder, so I'm just going to sneak into the truck and steer that straight. Okay. So now that the, now that the steering is steered straight, I should have a little bit of an easier time getting this stuff to go where it needs to go. Hard part, of course, is getting the first one started with the shield floating around and getting all in the way. Start the bolt. Try and find the hole in the dust shield. Try and find the hole in the hub. And try like hell to grab a couple of threads. Yeah, I got some threads there. And you can get back to me once they're tight. Okay, so the electrical connector is plugged back in. The wiring is strung. New clips. Got one here, I gotta figure out where that goes. Oh, gotta get that one. There's one behind. So I'm gonna get that last clip and it's time to put the caliper bracket back on. Okay, now that all the ABS sensor wire clips and stuff are in place, we can actually start tossing parts back on here. Start with the brake rotor. stick that on there for the moment and the caliper bracket Thing behind the rotor if I did not mention it earlier I apologize, it's an 18 millimeter for the caliper bracket bolts. <clears throat> nice and tight, yep. <clears throat> All right, cool. Now I'm gonna snip the zip tie, pull the caliper down and attempt to hang the caliper. Now, I'm gonna tell you, Quite often when you take brakes apart, getting the caliper back on without retracting the pistons can be a little bit difficult. So I'm gonna give it a try and if it proves to put up a fight, I'll show you how to retract the pistons. Cut the zip tie, get it out of here. Yeah, it's gonna be a pain in the scrotum. So, I'm gonna pull it off again. We're gonna take the inboard pad, take it out of its home, stick the inboard pad back in. I'm just gonna adjust the camera up here. I see that you can't really see what's going on. I'm gonna stick the inboard pad back in. I'm gonna reach behind me. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's like fully retracted. Anyways, big C-clamp is the answer here. Seen people use channel lock pliers and all kinds of stuff, but I like to use a big C clamp. Gonna be big enough? Nope, not yet. That'll do her. Get that on there. I'm just gonna give this a squeeze. Don't need much out of it. Just gonna buy myself maybe about a quarter of an inch here. Just so I don't have to fight so hard to get the thing on. All right, that should do it. Get rid of the C-clamp, slap the inboard pad back in. And hang the caliper, good stuff. Now it's time for the caliper bolts. All right, the caliper bolts are in and they're tight. Now, I'm going to start threading this axle nut on, and uh, I'll get it going as far as it'll allow me without spinning freely. And I'm just going to do what I did to take it off to put it back on again. 
Um, since I don't have an air tool here, I'm going to get it on as far as it will allow me to do so nicely. Then I'm going to put the wheel on, drop the front end of the truck on the ground, and use that to hold the thing steady while I torque it down. Alright, that'll do it. Time to put the wheel back on, drop the truck. Okay, so the vehicle is back on the ground. Jack stands are out, jacks out, lug nuts are tight, and I have tightened down that 35 millimeter axle nut, good and tight. Everything's good to go, and uh, you know, away I can roll. All right, folks, that about puts the wraps on how to replace the wheel bearing hub unit on an 03 Chevy Trailblazer, and a lot of vehicles are very, very similar. So even though you know, you might have a slightly different vehicle or maybe even a non-GM. They all pretty much come down to the same steps one way or the other. Anyways, that's done. The only thing that makes it so that your average Joe home mechanic can't do this in his driveway is this socket here. And in the case of the GM, in the case of the Chevy Trailblazer, this is a 35 millimeter socket. I bought an impact socket. Um, you don't have to, you can buy a regular socket, but you know, in the future, I may well be doing this job with an impact gun. Uh, if I can get a longer air hose to get the truck closer to the shop, which I can't do right now, I got stuff in the way, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, this is gonna run you about 20 bucks at an auto parts store. I bought mine at Princess Auto today, having done my homework and found out ahead of time what size I needed. I'll be doing this whole process again in a couple of days on the grocery getter that's an 03 Dodge Caravan that also needs a new wheel bearing unit because it's humming its guts out too. But the Trailblazer was louder so I prioritized it. We're going to get this one done first. It's done first. Great. Now I can move on to the caravan. So, thank you for tuning in to Sprockets Garage on YouTube and noting that, you know, <laughs> for arguably the first time this is a non-mower video. There will be more non-mower videos to come as I run into things. God only knows what I'm going to do and I've got to keep driving myself to say, hey, you know, if you're going to do that, make a video. If you're going to do that, make a video. If you're going to do that, if you're drywalling a room, make a freaking video. If people want to see videos, i got to start learning to make videos even if the topic matter is not related to what I normally do. You never know. Apparently this is how folks do research and homework now. So until next time, take care of yourself. Thank you.